and Deacon. Is that his name? Yeah. This follows. Hello, my sweet angels. It's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my September wrap up for 2024. I read a total of 15 books, so I will be splitting this up into two parts since I am a yapper. So, without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about is a little bit of a womp womp for me. It is Killing Floor by Lee Child. This is the first in the Jack Reacher series. I read this because it is my boyfriend's favorite book and he wanted me to read it. And I was not a fan. I gave it a two out of five stars. This follows Jack Reacher. He is an ex-military police officer. He is passing through a small town in Georgia when he is arrested for murder. As he is trying to clear his name for this murder, he realizes realizes that he is actually more involved than he originally thought. Like I said, literally only read this because my boyfriend Jason wanted me to, but I was not a fan. Uh, solely because Jack Reacher is a gross pig. He was just always commenting about the woman in this story and mostly about their appearance. The writing was also just extremely repetitive. I felt like he was saying one thing and then would say the exact same thing again but in a different way. For example, it was like, there was nothing in the box. The box was empty. It's like, yeah, if the box had nothing in it, then that means it's empty. Why are you literally saying the exact same thing? The writing just infuriated me. There were several instances of writing like that and it just got annoying very quickly. You might be asking, well, if you dislike the writing so much and Jack Reacher as a character, why would you give it two stars? Solely for the action and the violence. I thought this book had a lot of action and I really liked the description of the violence so that is why it is getting a two star from me and also because I don't want to hurt my boyfriend's feelings but not the biggest fan of Jack Reacher will not be continuing the series. I'm so sorry Jason. Next I have Holly Horror. This is by Michelle Jabay Corpora and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After her parents divorce, Evie and her mother relocate to Massachusetts. When they arrive she discovers that the home that they are moving into Hobby House is better known to the locals as Horror House after a young girl named Holly disappeared from her bedroom one night. This was definitely a cover read for me. I think it looks so dang cool. Like the little murder house is in the bonnet of the skeleton lady. I just think it's so cool. I did think that this was a pretty fun spooky autumn read. I think that this is a great bridge for that younger YA audience who are too old for middle grade horror but not quite ready to go into full-blown horror yet. It is definitely geared more towards a younger YA audience. The characters did feel quite young at times, especially with their dialogue and some of the choices and actions that they did. I did really like Evie and her need to discover what actually happened to the patchwork girl. We are left on a little bit of a cliffhanger so I am intrigued to see where the story goes and I do actually own the second book so I will be picking it up fairly shortly. But overall I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Forward Me Back to You by Metali Perkins and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Katina King who is the teen jiu-jitsu champion in Northern Carolina but she is having a tough time coping and dealing with something that happened in her past. It also follows Robin Thornton who was adopted from India when he was a baby by two very loving parents. He doesn't know anything about his past but he does want to know more. Robin and Kat meet one another during a summer service trip with their church to India where they grow closer and help the victims of human trafficking. I have had this on my shelves for years and I finally picked it up. It is definitely a powerful read but a very hard read at the same time. I did like how the author didn't shy away from the very difficult topics that are spoken about in this book. Nothing is sugarcoated, but it is done in a very respectable way. The story is told in dual point of view between Ravi, who is Robin, and Kat, and I definitely think that this enhanced and strengthened the story. I did really like the support system that Ravi and Kat both found in the church group. The chapters are quite short which made it a very easy read but I do think that it dragged quite a bit at the beginning and a little bit in the middle so I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I read The Co-op. This is by Tara DeWitt and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Lauren and Deacon who had a very short fling in their teen years but it did not end on the greatest terms. Now a decade later both of their grandmothers have passed and they left both Lauren and Deacon a part ownership of 
their dilapidated house. Lorin does have the money to fix this place up, but she is unable to access her trust fund until she is married. And then Deacon has the skills to fix up the place, but doesn't have the money. So they decide to get married in order to access all of the things that they need in order to fix this place up, and it's kind of the story of that. I think that this definitely has a very slow start, but by the end of the story, I was fully invested in these characters and wanted to know how they were going to work together to fix this house. I will say that the miscommunication in this kind of drove me a little bit wild. They definitely acted like children for most of the story, but I do think that they went through a lot of character development by the end, which I definitely enjoyed. It was nice to see them grow closer and learn to trust each other. I do like the ending and thought that it was very sweet, and it was definitely my favorite part of the story. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next, I have This Is Not A Dead Girl Story by Kate Sweeney. I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. After the death of her boyfriend, River Odell, popular girl Remy Green goes missing and is presumed dead a few days later. Her cousin Jules is convinced that she is not dead and she decides to team up with Sam, who is River's cousin, in order to figure out what actually happened to Remy. I enjoyed this story for the most part, but I don't think that it's anything memorable in the long run. There are some heavier themes, such as grief, friendship, and finding your own voice, which I thought were really well done. My biggest problem with this book was Jules. I wanted to like her, but something about her just rubbed me the wrong way. It is revealed quite early in the story that Jules actually had feelings for River, but he obviously loved his girlfriend, Remy, and so for the majority of the book, Jules was just putting her herself down for not being Remy, and it was a little bit strange at times. I did like how her opinion of herself changed as the story progressed, but that was always in the back of my head while I continued reading. I also found it a little bit strange that Sam was basically a replica of River in the looks department, and that was the only reason why Jules was giving him the time of day at the beginning. I did really like Sam as a character though, so I give him some bonus points, but it was an okay read for me, a 3 out of 5 stars. Next I read Medici Heist. This is by Caitlin Schneiderhan, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a group of talented misfits who band together in order to pull off a heist against the Medici family. I love me a good heist book, so I was very excited to pick this up. I will say that it is very info dumpy, so there were parts of the story that did definitely drag. I did like how we got to see the how and the why everybody was chosen for being a part of the heist team. I like the found family aspect of this, but I do think that at times the characters started blending together for me, so it was a little bit hard to distinguish them from one another. I wish that they had been fleshed out a little bit more to allow for their own unique personalities to shine through, but I did like how we got the point of view from multiple characters, so we got the backstory and got to learn more about each of them. And I also liked how each of the characters had their own side plots that they were dealing with while also being involved in this bigger heist. I do think that this would make a pretty cool movie, so filmmakers, if you're watching, you should, you should pick up the script because I think it would be cool, so I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I would talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher, and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. It has been a hundred years since the death of King Arthur. His descendant Arthur has been betrothed to Princess Gwendolyn for their entire childhood. They don't necessarily get along, but they decide to make a reluctant pact to keep each other's secrets when they spend a summer together in Camelot. This was a super cute read, although it was quite predictable. It has such a great cast of characters that you can't help but fall in love with. The dynamic between Gwen and Art was so funny. I found myself giggling a couple of times while reading, and you couldn't help but rooting for both of them on their quest for love. I really love the found family aspect that developed throughout the story as we got to know these characters more. Bridget was a very intriguing character to me. I wanted her and Gwen to work out so badly. I also absolutely love the side characters, especially Sydney. I desperately want a spin-off book following Sydney's story. I think it would be so much fun, but overall I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first seven books that I read for the month of September 2024. If you are interested in the next eight to make a total of 15 books for this month, then you can check out that video that is going to be up on my channel, hopefully very soon. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Bye!